Welcome back to plasterer.org.uk, home of Ask the Plasterer live stream and podcast. Now today, we're looking at this uh, room full of furniture. Now, I don't normally do rooms full of furniture, um, but I've worked for this client before. There was nowhere for them to put this furniture. Um, <coughs> I've got a ceiling here to bond and skim. Um, it's a bit of a pain but it's doable and that's what I'll be doing in this <coughs> in this video today now what you can see here I couldn't have done this without my stilts and the extension pole that I've got for my sport uh, my speed skin now here I've got the stilts on I'm leaning across that couch that uh, just below in the shop and I'm leaning my hawk as I, as I lean forward against the wall. I mean, the wallpaper is coming off and the client is redecorating, so uh, <clears throat> so touching that with my hawk isn't an issue on this particular job. If I'd only had uh, ladders or hop-ups to get across these couches, I, I would have had a big problem because the angle you'd have to put the ladder at, it just, <laughs> it just wouldn't work. And... Uh, you can't really be clambering and bouncing off the top of a off the top of a sofa. <clears throat> I mean, under the covers, these are are leather suites, um, and they're and they're well covered up. But um, <clears throat> but again, without the stilts at this point, or uh, most of the way along this uh, <laughs> job, uh, getting across and right up to the edges of this ceiling would have been uh, even more of a nightmare. Okay, so here I've already uh, PVA the ceiling again with my trademark one coat of neat PVA, and I've allowed that to properly dry. Um, <clears throat> I've given that then a coat of bonding, and then that is now being followed. It's just picked up, and it's now being followed by uh, by this first coat, the skin coat. And as usual, I'll be working from this end here and working my way back uh, using the space that I have got on the floor below. Um, as I say, the furniture that is in there is pushed around the room, but uh, of course, where the couches stick out on not just this wall, but the, uh, the wall to the right of me there as well. Um, as I said, without the stilts, I'm not quite sure how I would have gotten over that. Um, <clears throat> if I'd walked into a complete uh, stranger's job, and there was that much furniture in a room then I probably <coughs> I probably would have gone home um, because um, when you're decorating a ceiling if you're a decorator um, furniture is not really too much of an issue <coughs> because you can reach above it with your pole so the furniture can be moved to the center of a room uh, but as any of the plasterers know when you're skimming a ceiling you've got to go back and forth over it uh, part of the troweling up stages and to do that you can't really or you can't do a good job of it if you haven't got access to be able to get right across the whole ceiling from left to right and back to front so here I'm just finishing off that first coat <clears throat> now I think uh, in this part of the video this is the second time I'm going across this with my plastic speed skim, plastic plated speed skim. Um, I went over it straight away once uh, as soon as I got that first coat on. This that's not on the uh, not on the film. This is a second going over with the plastic speed skim. Now if it's picked up too much the plaster at this stage and you take the plastic speed skim over it, it will drag your plaster. Um, to avoid that, if you're going to go back over it with plastic one at this stage, just to flatten it out that little bit more, uh, you need to put spray some water up there. And you can see with that attachment, it um, comes undone quite easily. And I've also previously laid on this uh, little ceiling in the bay window. Okay, 
Now the second coat has gone on here and I'm just finishing off by going around the edges to make sure I've got a nice, uh, a nice tight join up to the coving that's, uh, that's remaining in place. The client was um, thinking about taking the coving down and then reinstating it but um, like I said even with a tight coat of bonding and uh, finish uh, it shouldn't be an issue. You've still got a bit of a member on the top of the, uh, top of the cove. So that's what we've done here. And um, what I like to do when I'm doing this kind of job, once the, the skimming has been completed, is I run a cork bead around the top member where the, uh, the plaster meets the cove. And that finishes it off really nicely. It gives you a nice straight white edge against your pink plaster. <clears throat> now here I'm spraying uh, again with the, uh, my large pump sprayer. I used to use the smaller one, but you realize if you get a larger spray like this one, you can basically coat the whole ceiling with a nice film of water for troweling, which is um, the small ones don't really um, accommodate doing that. You can do a, a small area at a time, but you can't really cover the whole, the whole thing. So that's my reason for using the, uh, the larger spray bottle. Now at this stage, uh, as I say I've got the water up there and this is now my metal bladed speed skim. Again, if you use a metal bladed speed skim on the earlier first coat and you use it too soon, it will draw the water to the surface and you get a huge chance of blistering. Whereas at this stage with the metal blade, it's just what you want for basically getting it, giving it that first wet trowel. But instead of, as in the past, I would be giving this wet trowel with, uh, with my Marshalltown uh, trowel, I'm using the Metal Blade Speed Skin, which is basically like a, a giant trowel, uh, in this case a giant trowel on a stick. And it does a lovely job, again if you go from left to right, right to left, it gets a lovely um, flatness to the ceiling. Which, although I've got ceilings very smooth using the traditional method without a speed skim, um, you just kind of feel that there's some extra flatness with using a larger, a larger blade like this than just a 14 or 16 inch trowel. Again, I would probably normally go over this a couple of times with the water and the metal blade speed skim. That's it. yeah, I'm putting a bit more water in there to go around once again. And so I, I get the tight edges around the coving with the with my trowel. When you do have the speed skim on the uh, on the extension pole, it can it can judder or quiver a lot easier than when you're actually up on the ceiling. Normally, in an ordinary room, I would um, I would do this stage. Uh, with the speed skin but standing on my stilts without the pole um, because of the amount of furniture in here and I can't really lean across it and hold the speed skin um, this has been ideal for stretching across again over the couches and over what otherwise would have been a, even more of an awkward ceiling um, to get nice considering the amount of furniture we've still got to contend with in the room now unfortunately uh, when I get to the end of this section of the video, my battery kind of packed up. Um, but after this, all I would be doing is wetting the ceiling again, um, back up on my stilts this time, and use my flexible trowel. Um, I use the uh, Ox Ultraflex to give it that final trowel um, up and down for that, uh, that beautiful finish. And, um, and there you have it. Fairly, I say, a fairly awkward ceiling to do, but it was still done in a, in a reasonable time span, um, including the bay as well. Uh, as you probably seen from the last video that I did publish, was me fitting down all the roll and stroll uh, plastic floor covering uh, on the floor around the uh, around the furniture, and then this is that job. So. I was happy at the end, I popped the lights back in, well it was me that took the lights out, <laughs> and 
Yeah. I mean, we're good. The customer's happy. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. Once again, guys, uh, smash the old like button. Thanks for subscribing. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.